Hi everyone, this is Hiba from My Little Journal and today I'm going to be working in my daily journal. I'm going to set up the month of March 2021 and I like to do that ahead of time just so it's ready for me once March starts. I don't have to worry about it. Um, I did do a little flip through for you guys at the beginning just to share with you how February looks at this point. But I decided I am going to use the same alpha stamps that I used for February. I really liked how my intro page looked, so I'm going to do the same thing for March. I'm using Studio Calico's Tucker Alphas, and I'm only using the outline. Really enjoyed kind of filling in my flowers from last month. And if you haven't seen my February setup, I will link it up at the eye for you. But this time around, I am going to use a different floral stamp. I really love Altenew's floral stamps. They are one of my favorites. They're like my go-to, and I went through the ones I have and decided to go with this really pretty one. I think it's called the Rose Petals or something like that. I can't even remember, but I will have it linked in the description box for you. So once I stamp out my little calendar right underneath March, I'm gonna grab that floral stamp from Alta New and I'm just gonna stamp it around my March. I'm not overdoing this. I love the simplicity of February. So I wanted to kind of replicate that and do it for March as well. Now, once I stamp a few flowers around March, I'm going to grab my acry acryliograph pens or markers. I can never say that word. But anyways, I'm going to use those to fill out my flowers. Now, this time around, I'm not filling them with one color. I think last time I used the really pretty like blue color, but this time around, I want to bring a pop of color. So I end up using like a coral and a really pretty yellow just to bring in some color to my spread. Now I mentioned this before, uh, I know a lot of people use like uh, tape to cover um, their words or their alphas to create like that layered look with their flowers, but a piece of paper works. I do it all the time, uh, it's cheaper. <laughs> so I just do it with paper and I love that look of the layered flowers in the background. I will grab these beautiful washi tapes that I got from Archer and Olive. They're so pretty, it's like a pack of four and I'm gonna add some of that washi tape as well, again, to bring in color. And that's how I decide on my marker like colors. I wanted them to match the pretty washi. So I end up using that coral and yellow from the washi. I'm also gonna add a border I'm really, really enjoying the border in my daily journal. I usually don't do borders, but in my daily journal, I just really like how it adds like um, that finished look. So once I do that, I'm going to grab those markers from Archer and Olive and fill out some of my flowers with them. Now I know a lot of people have tutorials on these markers where you can blend them in, you can add water, all that good stuff. I just do it the old fashioned way where I just color things in. <laughs> I'm not that creative, but I really like that look and I like how opaque they are. That's my favorite thing about them. But anyways, let's go ahead and start creating or setting up my weeks. I am going to make this easy for myself. Whenever I have a stamp out, I'm just going to stamp it on all the weeks and get it ready. So I don't have to keep going back and forth through my stamps for each week. So I used the stamp set from Citrus Twist to stamp out week on every single page. And then I'm going to grab my Everyday Explorers number stamp set to stamp out the week number. And that way it makes the process faster and easier. You're not going back and forth between stamps, especially if you are using stamps for your bullet journal or your daily journal. I just find this method to be easier. I also have been asked a lot about my stamp pad. I got that from Amazon. It is always linked in my Amazon shop and storefront and it's under stamp uh, essentials. So if you are looking for a good stamp pad, definitely recommend it. They do have a larger one, which I believe works well for an A5, 
but because I work a lot in traveler's notebooks, this size works well for me. Now we're going to start with week nine. I'm changing it up each week. I'm trying new methods, new things, and I want to use up all my stamps. So I am using the stamp set from Studio Calico. They're just little boxes with the days of the week. And I thought I can stamp the numbers inside the little boxes. This gives me plenty of space to journal. It's not too bulky. It's like a perfect little size. And the little uh, number stamps from Everyday Explorers, I think this is the mini calendar day stamp set. They fit perfectly in the boxes. So that totally made me happy and made my life easier. Now, as always, I will use the same floral stamp from Altenew to kind of keep my weeks a little bit cohesive. I just add them to the edges of my spread, and this is a good place to add color to my spreads. I'll definitely share with you at the end how I fill them out. But in the end, I really like to bring in that same floral from my March intro page. That way everything matches. And if I add any stickers or any stamping later, you'll still have that cohesiveness and it doesn't look like a hot mess, if that makes sense. I thought I would change it up this month and use bigger borders. And I started with this border. I, I like it and I don't. I feel like it's really, really bold and in your face. But actually, I think it will probably look pretty good once I start journaling. It'll help like kind of separate the days. You, know, it, you try things. I think it's a good way to find your rhythm, to find your flow. And I tried it and I'm good with it. And as you can see, that spread came together pretty quickly because I'm trying to keep things simple and I'm trying not to go back and forth from stamp set to stamp set. Now for week 10, I decided to use the stamp set from Ellie Studio. It's just the days of the week and I'm going to add that to my spread. And then I found a stamp in the stamp set that was really cute. I can't remember what the sentiment said, but I felt like it would look cool and fit perfectly right above Monday, but it didn't stamp really well. This is my go-to fixer upper is using sticker paper. I re-stamped it on sticker paper. I'm going to trim it out and then cover up my boo-boo. It's my go-to. It's the easy way where you don't have to start all over again. Once I cover up my boo-boo, I'm going to grab, I believe, my Everyday Explorers calendar day stamp sets to add the numbers for each day. But I think I'm going to change it up this time around and I'm going to use a colored ink. Um, I end up using this beautiful Peachy Keen from Studio Calico. This is a new color at Studio Calico and it just really added a pop of color and brightened up the spread just simply by stamping my numbers in a different color. I go back to my Altenew floral stamp and in that stamp set there were vines really cute very pretty so you can kind of add to your flowers and i thought you know what these vines would work perfectly to kind of separate my days okay so when i use that border for my first week uh, and i told you guys it was bold and in your face so i was worried that i would do it again and not like it so i was like i'm gonna use these vines and see if i like it and i really love how they look so I end up using them, I believe, on the rest of the weeks for March, just because it was simple, it was not too bold and not in your face. So I just went with it and I really like how it looks. I even finished this one off by adding a little flower at the end and it just was the perfect little touch. Let's move on to week 11. So I wanted to share with you how you can use one stamp set that has different fonts for the days of the week to create multiple layouts with different styles and looks. I am using this day by day everyday explorer stamp set. It has all kinds of different ways that you can document the week. And I love the stamp set because really basically if you don't own any days of the week stamp sets, and you just have this one, you can get all kinds of different looks. I started with the handwritten days of the week from that stamp set. I'm going to use the stamp set from 
the paper person shop to stamp out the numbers and I also changed it up with this beautiful yellow and these numbers are perfect they don't take up a lot of space they're like tall and thin and once I'm done stamping my numbers I'm just going to grab that floral stamp from Altenu and stamp a few flowers at the edge of my spread again trying to keep things cohesive and simple as you can see I haven't added any borders I have not filled out any of my flowers and again that's okay because I want to do it all at once once I have a product out I'm just going to use it for all the weeks it makes the process so much faster and so much easier but anyways once I'm done stamping my flowers I'm going to grab the vine from that stamp set and just add that to separate my days Now we can move on to week 12 where I'm going to grab that same day by day stamp set from Everyday Explorers and use a different font for my weeks. Again, you don't need all the stamps. You can have one stamp with different fonts and you're going to get a different look every single time. And as you can see, just by stamping the days of the week with this different stamp, it just looks so much different and I can kind of make it my own and it will look totally different than week 11. Once I stamp out my days, I'm gonna grab this stamp set from Kelly Perky. This is an old stamp set. It was for like December daily or something like that, but it's perfect for a journal like this. And I'm just gonna stamp it in black ink. Now I wish I moved up Sunday a little bit more further up because it basically hit the edge of my spread which is not a big deal, you guys. It's a daily journal. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I'm going to finish up this week with my floral stamp again, just adding a few flowers here and there. I end up not using the vines to separate my days because they're all in a line, so really I didn't really need that. But I'm going to go ahead and move on to week 13. So for week 13, there's only three more days of March. So I don't need a lot of space and I thought it would be fun to use the stamp set from Feed Your Craft. I love the little hexagons. I thought I would, you know, create my own days of the week and I stamped the hexagons. I'm going to fill them out with the filler stamp and then I'm going to go back to that Everyday Explorers stamp set, the day by day, and use a different font for the days of the week. Again, you just need one stamp set with different fonts and you can get totally different looks each and every week. Now I decided to fill my hexagons with this really pretty like almond color from Studio Calico. Just, I don't know, I wanted to try to keep the colors as simple as possible. And I even added smaller hexagons just to add that look and change it up a little bit. This is where I grab the day by day and my my mini calendar day stamp sets from Everyday Explorers to add the number and the week to each little hexagon. This time around, I went with the cursive and I really like how it looked. Uh, obviously, it just added that little touch of hand lettering or handwriting and I really like how that ended up looking. And once I'm done stamping that, I can grab my floral stamp from Altenu and add a little flower to my spread again to keep things cohesive and looking very similar to each other. Now that the base of my weeks are done, I can add the little things like the staying at home. I've shared this before. I have the stamp set that had staying at home. It was perfect for those who have been staying at home because of the pandemic. And I've been stamping and documenting how many days it has been. So I will go through each week and add the staying at home. Again, it makes it so much easier when you do things in bulk and you're not pulling out each stamp for each week basically do it all at once and it makes the process easier. And once I'm done stamping staying at home, I'm going to grab my ruler and pen and add a border to every single week. Okay. 
And by the way, I've also been asked about the ruler I use in my daily journal. This is from We Are Memory Keepers, if I'm not mistaken, or American Crafts. It comes in a pack. So in that pack, there's curved rulers, straight rulers, small and large ones. It's a great little pack, especially if you work in a bullet journal. I always have it linked in my Amazon shop as well if you're interested in this pack. Now I'm also gonna go ahead and add my monthly tab. I've been asked about these as well. I got these from Studio Calico. It will be linked down in the description box for you, but they have them in every different color you, that you can imagine. So definitely check it out if you're interested. But right now I'm gonna share my Pipstick little kit here. If you're not familiar with Pipstick Club, it is a sticker club. You get a kit of stickers every month and they are so adorable. I'm trying to figure out which ones I wanna use for my month. I usually try to stick to one to two sheets of stickers a month. And I really love the black females. They're just so beautiful. I wish I got this kit earlier and set up February with it because it was Black History Month, but it didn't work out. So I'm just gonna use them for March. So I'm gonna start with the black females and then I'm just gonna add a few on each spread. I want to finish the sheet. That is always my goal. If I start using a sheet, I wanna finish it for the whole month. That way you don't have way too much stickers in your, your stash and you're actually using them. And I love cutting up my stickers as well. It's a great way to use them and add them to one spread and it just makes the spread very cohesive. And once I add a girl or two to each spread and finish up that sticker sheet, I'm gonna grab the other sticker sheet that had little cups like coffee cups and teacups, and I drink a lot of coffee, love to represent my coffee in my journals and in my like projects, so I'm gonna end up using those to add a few here and there. I love how that girl fit perfectly on my hexagon, like her head was a little bit tilted, so it fit really, really well. That was definitely not planned, but I love how it turned out. Again, trimming my stickers in half, to make them fit into the fold, which I recommend to trim them in half so they can like fit in between the folds. I don't like to crease my stickers or anything in between the folds. I feel like it bulks up your journal really quickly. And on that sheet, there was just little tidbits that you can add like, I think it was like sunshine, flowers, avocados, things like that. And I'm just adding them wherever they fit just to add a pop of color. But I also wanted to mention that Pipstick was very generous to share a coupon code with my subscribers. If you use the code FUNHIBA10, I have it linked in the description box, you will get 10% off your purchase. So definitely take advantage of that and use it if you are thinking of trying this kit or you want more stickers in your life definitely check it out and use that code. Anyways, I grabbed my markers again from Archer and Olive and now I'm gonna fill out some of my flowers. Now, usually I don't fill out every little piece of my flowers. I like to have that messy look or that incomplete look. So I usually just fill out a leaf or half of the flower. I'm just really using the markers to add color to my spread. Now I'm almost done with my spread. Once I fill out some of my flowers, I'm going to share with you how my weeks look. And I'm really, really excited. I love how everything turned out and I really enjoyed having fun with my stamps. And now March is complete. And hopefully at the end of March, I will share my April setup and a quick flip through of March. Anyways, you guys, don't forget, I will be linking everything I use down in the description box for you. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up, and if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing, and I hope to see you guys very soon. Bye!